All right, Mavericks fans, Lydia Taylor here from the Kansas City Mavericks. Joining me today, so excited, our very special guest, our fifth coach in Kansas City Mavericks history, Coach Tad Ohad. Tad, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you very much. Excited to be here. All right. Now, I just want to start out with a simple first question. First of all, congratulations. What have the last 24 hours been like for you? Yeah, I would say uh, I would say the the last the last 24 hours have been hectic. Um, you know, I had to I had to turn the phone off at some point yesterday. Um, really, I think everything's been compounded with this this pandemic that we're going through. And so, really, from you know last week, um, you know, talking with Lamar and Brent uh, via Zoom, and then just going through this entire process, it's gone very quickly. Um, and so. It's been exciting, you know. I, you know, I was talking to a, a good friend of mine, a college coach, the other day, and he said, "Hey, Tad, you deserve it. Enjoy it. Have fun with it." And um, really, it's been extremely um, nice and just also uh, really exciting to see the amount of passion behind the the hockey community in Kansas City and the sports community. And so, I mean, absolutely, just jacked about that, and and it just. It, it, it's very comforting and it's exciting. Yeah. And kind of to mention that community, I was going through our social channels and looking at all of, um, you know, the social posts where we were introducing you to our fans and it was overwhelmingly positive, which with anything, any announcement, it's not likely that you're going to get 100%, you know, colorful colors, but you did, you know, there was so many comments. Welcome to KC coach. Um, just a lot of positivity. What does that mean to you to know, you know, on your first day being introduced to this new fan base that you were really welcomed with open arms? Uh, it, it definitely, it, it means a lot, you know, uh, that, that definitely doesn't, um, that doesn't escape me. Uh, it, it, it means a lot. Um, it also means that they're excited that they're, they're looking forward. I, in this time, you know, we're, we're looking forward to the future. We're excited about the future. And to kind of have some of that hope and that excitement, it definitely makes things easier. Um, but it's definitely welcoming. And I will say um, Lamar and Brent have done a phenomenal job, and, and, and Cole as well, to, to really in, invite me and welcome me into the, the organization with open arms. That's really made this transition I mean, it, it's challenging and difficult when you're at the same place for seven years. Um, you know, the, the change can be difficult. And with how great that they've been and how personal they, they've been, it's really helped. And it, it's also let me know that this is the right decision. This is the right place to be. And I'm ecstatic about that. And just seeing the excitement that the Orange Army and the, the, Mav, the Mav, count, Mav, Mav country has is, is exciting. And Earlier in the week, and I'll be quite honest with you, you lose track of the days right now. Yeah. But uh, earlier in the week, I met um, the entire front office um, with the uh, Mavericks, and and that was that really sent a great message. Made me feel good that you know what, this is a top notch quality organization. Mm -hmm. These are these are quality people. Um, it definitely put me uh, put me at ease. Yeah, and you know, being on that call, I can tell you firsthand that you know there was a feeling of energy that a lot of us felt after that call. So I think that speaks a lot to your presence and a lot to what you're hoping to do here for the Kansas City Mavericks. Something I want to talk to you about, which you will become very familiar with, is the phrase of being a maverick. Um, we talk about what it means a lot. We define it a lot. To you, what does being a maverick mean? And what do you want your players to understand when you say what being a maverick means? Yeah, you know what? I think that's that is a great way to put it. And being a maverick is is understanding the greater good. Understanding that you aren't just here playing hockey. You're here to engulf yourself in the environment and the energy that that is the Kansas City Mavericks. And and what does that mean? That means that expectations are higher. That means that you just can't clock in and clock out. Is that you've actually got to take an interest not only in the community but in the youth program, in the people that support you, uh, the people that come to practice and watch practice on a daily basis, the season ticket holders, you know, the people that are involved in, in making your life easier. 
Um, for example, I look at the front office and I look at the hockey operations office and I look at the players. Well, we're all helping one another. And mm -hmm. so players are expected to take an interest in that. Um, to me, being a Maverick is understanding that when you take the ice, that you're, you're performing to your best the entire 60 minutes, mm -hmm. that you aren't making excuses that if you're down by a goal or down by three goals, or if you just don't feel it, you don't have legs that night, that you can't take the night off, that you've got to continue to challenge. You've got to continue to work through those challenges. Two, it's about honoring the game. And nowadays, more than anything, it's so vital because we're lucky to have a job. We're lucky to be employed. We're lucky to be working. There's so many people in this community that are struggling. And so you've got to come to work every day and you've got to relish the moment and you've got to be ready to work. Um, this, isn't, this isn't just, you know, cliche. We want players that they want to be more. Mm -hmm. We want to win a championship. We want to we want to go to the playoffs. We want to continue to be go deep in the playoffs. We want to continue to build on a great tradition, which is the Kansas City Mavericks. The, the Kansas City Mavericks, when you look back really at the history of Kansas City hockey, the Kansas City Mavericks, the Missouri Mavericks, then even the Kansas City Blades, Kansas City as a whole has had an exciting hockey environment for many years. We want them to understand that there's a bigger picture and um, we want to get the right guys representing that. And then that's vital. Um, and that's something that, you know what, it's not going to happen in one day. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to take time and we're, we're willing and we're committed to doing that. And I think we have a lot of guys that, that buy in and, and want to do that. Um, but the focus is understanding that it's, it's more than just being a hockey player. It's a Maverick hockey player. Absolutely. Um, before we move into those fan questions that some of our fans submitted, I want to talk to you about something over the past couple of seasons, our fans have always expressed concern. There are a couple variables within this league that you're never really going to be able to control. Movement of players, injuries of players, trades, whatever that may be, there is a level of consistency that this league does not offer. How are you going to come into this room, you know, the Kansas City Mavericks room, and lead this team and ensure that no matter what happens that week, good or bad week, there, are, there is a consistent culture of winning? It's a continued process. You know, like one of the things that we'll do is early in the season, we'll meet as a team, and, and Cole and I have already begun these discussions, and we'll set goals. Um, but with that said, when you set a goal, you also need to then set that goal and tuck it away. Mm -hmm. Then the next conversation needs to be, how am I going to achieve that goal? And you've got to talk about the process. And then you take a look at those processes and you look at the skills that it's going to take to get there. Mm -hmm. And really, it's, it's tunnel vision. It's beginning to focus on the task at hand. And so... I understand the frustration within the ECHL, particularly because if you look at the history of the Missouri Mavericks and then the Kansas City Mavericks, the ECHL, it's the ever-changing hockey league. There's a lot of roster changes. Mm -hmm. So these fans, these passionate fans become enamored and they enjoy certain players, but then they get called up and then they never come back. Or they get traded and then they never come back and they're like, oh, he was our favorite. Why did he get traded? Mm -hmm. Or why did he get called up? And so it's a balancing act. And I will say this. Um, players want to love and enjoy their time in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. um, but their aspiration is continue to advance their career on. Mm -hmm. And so I celebrate in that and we want to help them advance their career on to Stockton and Calgary and so forth. And during their time here, we want them to be invested in our fan base and invest in being the very best player possible. But what you also are going to find is you're going to find players that want to stay and they want to stick around and they want to be a major part of that community for the long run. Right. And you've seen that. And, and, and really, Kansas City has seen that with several players. You look at a Simon Watson, Yurako Carzo. Um, there, there are other examples of that in the, in the Kansas City community. And I'm coming from a place in Florida 
that's very much that. Mm-hmm. Um, more than half of the half of the people in the fire department are ex Florida Everblades. You know, um, I I basically will run into an ex Everblade. You know, every weekend somewhere. You know, and so players they want to love and stay in communities and and really you know what that's about getting the right player and mm-hmm. then introducing him to the community and and one of the things we were talking about and I was talking with Cole today about this one of the ways that we create kind of camaraderie amongst the guys mm-hmm. is let's show them what Kansas City has to offer mm-hmm. let's do some different events where they can really get to understand the community and really love the community and so I can appreciate the fans' frustration with that. Mm -hmm. The thing I would say is um, trades will be made for the betterment of the team. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, my primary focus is to put the very best product on the ice that can have the most success. And so if we don't feel that a player is buying in or he's part of the solution, then we will look to make changes. Mm -hmm. But with that said, we're going to look at ourselves and I'm going to look internally at myself. What can I do to help that player mm-hmm. either buy in or modify his game? Just not going to be trade happy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that's one of the things. And, and as I said in the press conference, it's finding our kind of guy, mm-hmm. you know, what's our kind of guy. And, and, and not always is that the best player. It's the right fit. Because once you get the right kind of guy and then you get a lot of them and you get the right fit, now you've got something exciting. And it's, it's basically a, it's a great question with a very complex and hard answer that's going to take time Mm -hmm. and hard work. But I I know that, um, you know, Lamar, Brent, myself, um, Cole, we're very dedicated to making that happen. Absolutely. Very well said. It's just embracing, you know, what this league is and making sure that our fans understand that. So I think that will really help them, you know, understand why some of those decisions are made. Now, speaking of those fans again, um, a couple of them have sent in questions for you. So I'm going to start out one that kind of talks a little bit about what we're going through right now. Um, Stacy, a season ticket holder since year 11, asked, what have you learned during this quarantine and how will it change how teams and players must prepare for next season? Are there extra challenges to face with more time off the ice? That is an excellent question. That's a question that I've continued to look at. Um, first and foremost, um, there's absolutely no reason for not a single player to come into training camp not in the best shape of his entire life. Mm-hmm. I, I, there's no reason. Um, two, um, gratefulness. Um, you know, sometimes you will see players um, that, that are in the ECHL and you, you'll hear them, uh, for lack of a better term, um, whine, complain. Um, there's, I have absolutely no time for that. Mm -hmm. Um, we are so fortunate. We are so lucky. Um, we are so blessed to play this game. Um, and so I think players will reflect on just how much they, they miss, um, miss the game. And so that's one thing. I also think just with regards to the interactions with players, um, you know, we have to, our first, our priority, number one, is to make sure that fans are safe and players are safe. Right. And so we're, lear- we're learning about that, and, and I don't have all the answers to that, but I do know that um, there's going to be lots of conversations with our training staff on just how can we keep players safe, how can we keep guys healthy, you know, what can we do from a cleanliness standpoint. Um, these are scary times, um, and so – we will have to deep dive and examine what we can do different. Um, But I I definitely think that everyone, when the game comes back, they're going to be excited. You know, they're going to be extremely excited and we're going to feel extremely blessed and fortunate to be on that ice. And that needs, that needs to be showcased because the people in the stands are paying their hard hard earned dollars to watch. Absolutely. And one last question. It's kind of a fun one. If you weren't a hockey coach, what would you do? That's from Anthony, a new season ticket holder. That's a great, that's a great question. Um, well, um, you know what? I've been involved in hockey my whole life. Um, 
I have a passion for art. I love art. Um, I love music. Um, I love cigars, you know, um, uh, with that said, I love connections, you know, so whether it be, honestly, it, it would probably always be a coach. Um, but, you know, I would say, you know, between uh, strength and conditioning, art, um, cigars, and music, those are four things that I love outside of hockey. And so, uh, you, to be honest with you, when, when this whole pandemic hit, that runs across your mind, like, what happened if you can't ever coach? Right. And, uh, it's a, it's a scary thought, and I, I tried to change the thought very quickly. Yeah, well, you don't need to worry about that now. You are here. We are so happy to have you. It was great to sit down with you. I know you're a busy guy, so you got a couple more interviews to go today. But again, I just want to say thank you, welcome, and I know our fans are going to be so excited whenever that day comes when they get to meet you. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate all you do. Yep, absolutely. Take care.